Good morning and welcome to St. Anne's Church. We thank you for joining us today for our Eucharistic celebration. Uh, to those here present for those watching from the safety of their home. Today's Mass intentions are for the eternal rest of Maria Armida Felix, Everardo Silva, Joe Alcaraz, Alfonso Beronon, Bernon on his first anniversary, and Joseph Cuyenta. We ask you please to be respectful of those around you and maintain your social distance of six feet. Remember to leave your masks on for the whole mass. Restrooms will be open, but please limit visits to emergencies only, as only two persons are allowed inside at a time. Please also remember to not let your children go alone to the restroom, and an adult must accompany them. Thank you again for your cooperation. Please stand and join in singing number 748 in your hymnal. This is not a page number, but a hymnal number towards the back of your missalette. It is number 748. Gather us in. Number 748. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our dreams and our feelings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of our the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, all to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My sisters and brothers, in song and ceremony today, we celebrate the solemnity of the Corpus Christi, the most precious body and blood of Jesus. So during this Holy Mass, let us pray for each other, for all of our families, that we may always encounter the most Holy Eucharist in a profound way in order for us to enjoy a life of grace, peace and joy. Let's now acknowledge our sins and failures and so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Oh 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. God, who by the precious blood of your only begotten Son have redeemed the whole world, preserve in us the work of your mercy, so that ever honoring the mystery of our salvation, we may merit to obtain its fruits through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading, a reading from, a reading from the book of Exodus, when Moses came to the people, and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, "We will do everything that the Lord has told us." Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocaust and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it out loud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all of these words of his. The word of the Lord.
how shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I'm your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you, Will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving? And I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have to come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is a mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance, from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Praise, O Zion, voices raising, glorify your shepherd king. Let unworthy yet impassioned, thankful hymns of homage ring. Join your humble acclamations to the psalms which angels sing. Hear recalling Christ's own passion, come disciples as his friends. Blessing, breaking, pouring, sharing, by these actions Christ still sends. To the world his blood and body, covenant which never ends. Christ the Paschal Lamb obedient gave himself as God had planned. Now replacing former offerings, in self-giving here he stands. 
Praise again in consecration, eat and drink his great command. As we keep this wondrous mystery, heart and mind in faith combine. Here we eat the bread, his body, drink his precious blood in wine. This the deathless victim's table set in sacramental sign. Though a multitude receives him, Christ in my knee parts is one. Shed alike by saints and sinners, he remains God's only Son. This the choice and gift of heaven, saving grace withheld from none. Though the bread is now been broken, though the wine has now been poured, Christ here present in these symbols, still his whole and truly Lord. Through one meal one church is nourished, leading to one life restored. came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of the Eleven Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Following him, Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you. I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. my sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. When Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta wanted to open her religious house in the city of San Francisco, 
the archdiocese made all the efforts possible to make their convent as comfortable as possible. But of course, when Mother Teresa arrived the city with her sisters, the first thing what she did was she ordered all the comforts and luxuries removed from the convent. And she openly made a statement, all we need here in the convent is the tabernacle. Yes, my sisters and brothers, all we need for a life of faith is the Holy Eucharist. The solemnity of Corpus Christi, the most precious body and blood of Jesus, is significantly important for all of us because the Holy Eucharist is a source and summit of our life together as a church. And last Monday, friends, I was with the eighth graders who graduated from our school, St. Anne, and I asked them several questions, and one of the questions was, where do we tangibly experience the divine presence? There were several answers, and one of the boys said beautifully in the Holy Eucharist. Yes, my sisters and brothers, we experience the divine presence, the presence of the Lord, the abiding presence of the Lord everywhere. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in our midst. When the celebration of the sacraments take place, the divine presence is there. And above all, when we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, we experience the real presence of Jesus. And my friends, the Second Vatican Council states clearly, as a sacrifice, the Holy Eucharist is a central of a life of faith. And St. Augustine, in addition, urges the Holy Eucharist is the mystery of your faith. The mystery of your faith has been placed on the altar every time you come together to offer the Holy Eucharistic sacrifice. That's how, my sisters and brothers, every time we come together to offer the Holy Eucharistic celebration, we experience Jesus in the form of bread and wine. And of course, my friends, we have a special day that we celebrate in the church's calendar on Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, the institution of the Holy Eucharist. But additionally, we have this feast precisely because for us to understand the value and the significance of the most Holy Eucharist that we have specially known as Corpus Christi Sunday. And at first it was Pope Urban IV introduce this great feast to the universal church. That's how we have it here in order for us to understand and value and recognize the most holy Eucharist as a bread of life for us. Jesus is the heavenly bread for us who nourishes us for us to be spiritually strong. And my friends, on this Corpus Christi Sunday, we have come together as a family of faith to enter into a deeper communion with the Lord, the Eucharistic Lord. And we are not here just to receive Jesus spiritually. We are here to receive Jesus into our hearts sacramentally in the form of bread and wine. Unfortunately, my sisters and brothers, Sadly, some are just satisfied with online masses and live streaming services, and they might think they can fulfill their Sunday obligation by receiving spiritual communion. It was taken for granted and dispensed during that time of pandemic. Now things are getting better, but we should remember spiritual communion is not at all equivalent to the sacramental communion, the holy communion. 
And that's how, my friends, every time we come together and receive Jesus, we make a profound statement of faith. When a priest, a deacon offers your Holy Communion, the body of Christ, as a faithful communion, we say, Amen. It is so, let it be so, I acknowledge and profess that it is the body of Jesus. That is the profession of faith. That's a clear statement of faith. And so my sisters and brothers, Corpus Christi Sunday has three specific purposes that's how we celebrate every year. The first purpose, it is to give a collective thanks to the God, the Father, for Jesus Christ, for the abiding presence of our Lord Jesus in our midst. And secondly, we are to remind ourselves that we are strengthened by the most precious body and blood of Jesus. And thirdly, we are to value and recognize the importance of the Holy Eucharist because every time we receive Jesus, we become divinized. We become Jesus to each other. And therefore, my sisters and brothers, Holy Memorial is something that has several names. The Holy Eucharist. Because Jesus offered himself as an act of thanksgiving to the Holy Father, the Heavenly Father. That's how it is, the Holy Eucharist. And it is also called Holy Communion because when we receive Jesus, we become one with Jesus. We are in communion with Jesus. And it is also called the Last Supper because it is a meal. We are nourished. And fourthly, it is a holy mass because it has a purpose. It has a mission for all of us. That's covered at the end of the mass. Our deacons would proudly profess, go in peace and glorifying Lord by your lives. Therefore, my sisters and brothers, theologically, the holy mass is a sacrament because sacrament is something that we get God's grace. This is an invisible sign of visible grace. And that's how, my friends, we experience God's grace. And as a sacramental sacrifice, it is a sacrifice of Jesus. And it is a meal because we are nourished. And of course, every time we celebrate the Holy Mass, this is a reenactment or representation of the memorial sacrifice of Jesus and Calvary. Therefore, what had begun 2020 years ago happens here and now on the altar. Jesus becomes the bread of life for us. And Jesus gave a beautiful meal to his disciples. The Last Supper, Lord's Supper, it was a huge meal with a difference in which and through which he showed them his love for them. Jesus loved us so much that he gave his life for us. And he continued to love us by giving us his own body and blood. That's a sacramental sacrifice. That's what happens here on the altar of the Lord. Jesus continues to offer himself for us, for a life of faith, hope, and grace. And so, my sisters and brothers, at every holy mass, we commit ourselves again and again. We are the body of Christ, Corpus Christi. And St. Paul would beautifully say, how do we spell out that we are the body of Christ? We are Corpus Christi. And he would say, if a member of the body of Jesus suffers, we all suffer together. That's a concern that we have for each other. When one of our members rejoice, we rejoice. And that's how we experience the abiding presence of the Lord in our midst because we are the body of Christ. And my friends, communion is a beautiful word, a beautiful term that tells us that we are here to enter into a deeper communion with our Lord Jesus. And he's calling on us today, every time and we are here, take this and eat, take this and drink. 
Because that communion is something very spiritual that permeates every part of a being. And one thing, my friends, this communion should lead us into communion with one another in our families. There cannot be divine communion if we are not able to have communion with those around us. And that's a challenge for all of us, my friends, because Holy Mass is something that we celebrate for a life of faith, for a life of grace, that is not the end here. The Holy Mass has to be carried out. We become living tabernacles because we carry Jesus. And so every time we receive Jesus in the form of bread and wine, we become Jesus. We become Jesus to each other. We become divinized. And so before this greatness of this mystery of a faith, my friends, let us solemnly adore the most holy Eucharist in the words of St. Thomas Aquinas. O oh, blessed Trinity, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Praised be the holy name of Jesus. Amen. My sisters and brothers, may we now profess our faith from our hearts. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sisters and brothers gathered around this Eucharistic table, we now seek God's blessings for ourselves and all the world. For the church, that the blood of Christ that is poured out for the world may be the cleansing grace which unites all God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our bishops, that they may exercise their ministry with supernatural courage and fidelity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our nation, that our citizens may be faithful to the Christian values in which it was founded, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That every member of our parish family may respond generously to sharing their God-given gifts and talents for the work of God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the faithful who have died, especially for Maria Armida Felix, Everardo Silva, Joe Alcaraz, Alfonso Bernan on his first anniversary, and Joseph Quentin, that they may share in the banquet of God's eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Father, we ask you to hear these prayers and fulfill all our needs that we may follow your will more faithfully. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please join in singing number 557 in your hymnal, number 557, Pan de Vida. Pan de Vida, cuerpo del Señor, cup of blessing, blood of Christ the Lord. shall be first poder a servir porque Dios es amor we are the dwelling of God fragile and wounded and weak we are the body of Christ called to be the compassion of God, pan de vida, cuerpo del Señor, cup of blessing, blood of Christ the Lord, at this table, the last shall be es amor usted es mi alma Señor me inclino a lavarles los pies hagan lo mismo humildes sirviéndose unos a otros pan de vida cuerpo del Señor a blessing blood of Christ the Lord at this table the last shall be first poder a servir porque Dios es Pray, my friends, that a sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his disciples, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross. Jesus offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect sacrifice, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You may make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven sing a new song in adoration and we with all hosts of angels cry out, without the end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the 
you are indeed holy o lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving it thanks said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving it thanks he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is a chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of a son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of a church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with the holy spirit may become one body one spirit in christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect especially the most blessed virgin mary mother of god and blessed joseph her spouse with your apostles and glorious martyrs saint anna our patron and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may this sacrifice of reconciliation we pray o lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis of pope kevin of bishop and his brother bishops the order of bishops all the clergy the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion o merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit 
All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, may we now call God our Father and the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said in apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of a church and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Holy one train forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. the Lamb of God. Behold him, Jesus, the bread of life for us. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ to keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Student singing number 585 in your hymnal, number 585. Take and eat this bread.
this bread, this is my body. Take and drink this cup, this is my blood. When you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Come before the table. Sisters and brothers, may we now do the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Next weekend, we will have our Parish Projects Collection. As a reminder, these collections will go towards any repairs needed or future projects. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Registrations for First Communion for Children and Confirmation for Young Adults will begin this Monday, June 7th. Please take home a bulletin or review it online because you will need an appointment to be able to register your children. Should you have any questions, please contact the Faith Formation Office. Remember that you can ask one of the members of Jovenes Para Cristo for PSA envelopes. There you can make your pledge or make a payment. Please take home a copy of our bulletin or view it online on our webpage, saparish.org. We thank you for joining us for Mass today and we look forward to seeing you next week. Special announcement from the bishop's office. Bishop Kevin Van has asked us to announce that starting Sunday, June 13th, the dispensation that was made regarding being excused from attending Mass during the pandemic will come to an end, and all the faithful must begin attending Mass every Sunday. Because of this, Sunday, June 20th, will be the last day that we live stream our Masses on Facebook page you are welcome to watch the live stream masses from Christ Cathedral. We are also called to invite our family and friends that haven't been coming. Please let them know that when we come to mass, we are safe and respectful with each other. We hope to see more faces soon. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant to Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone. You too, Father. As we are sent forth today, please join in singing number 684 in your hymnal, Strength for the Journey, number 684. I will be I will be, I will be strength for the journey. I will be, I will be, I will be strength for the journey. There is a road meant for you to travel. Narrow and steep is the shepherd's way. And as you say yes, I will be strength for the journey. I will be, I will be, I will be strength for the journey. I will be, I will be, I will be strength.